Okay, this is video three. I had to switch over to my phone because it said my storage. I don't know what's wrong with my tablet, but for some reason, I don't even have that many pictures of it, but it said it's full. So, uh, Father God, please may your blessing continue to be with us as we do part three. It says um, he will uh, uh, let the light shine in our hearts. And uh, what I was getting ready to say on that, by him saying that he will uh, uh, allow the light to shine in your hearts, that means the light of Jesus Christ to shine in your hearts, where uh, people will start seeing a difference in you. You start seeing a difference in yourself. The things you can hear, the things you um, decide to put aside, you know, uh, foolishness, uh, sin, uh, different things like that, you know. That kind of light, you have to take that into the full context of what it's about right there when he says, um, he can and will attend to your cry and will let light shine into our hearts. That means he's going to start uh, the cleansing, a cleansing, a healing, all of that. The light means so much, you know, and I wanted to make sure I said that before we moved on. Okay, it says, through sincere prayer, we are brought into connection with the mind of the infinite. The infinite is God. We may have no remarkable evidence at the time that the face of our Redeemer is bending over us in compassion and love, but this is even so. We may not feel his visible touch, but his hand is upon us in love and pitying tenderness. When we come to ask mercy and blessing from God, we should have a spirit of love and forgiveness in our own hearts. How can we pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and yet indulge in unforgiving spirit? Matthew 6 and 12 in the New Testament. If we expect our own prayers to be heard, we must forgive others in the same manner and to the same extent as we hope to be forgiven. Amen. There's some people, you know, that... Uh, Man, I tell you, I can look at them and I just want, oh, I just want to say something stupid to them, you know, just to get something going. But I have to remind myself, you know, I can't do that. And because I don't like them, I don't associate with them, you know. But that's not saying that, you know, if I saw them, if I was walking down the street and I saw that they needed help, I wouldn't say, uh, I'm not going to help them, you know. But, you know, I would have to go to my prayer closet and ask God, you know. I might not talk to them, but if they need help, I would help them. Perseverance in prayer has been made a condition of receiving. Let's go to conditions of acceptance. We must pray always if we would grow in faith and experience. We are to be instant in prayer, to continue in prayer and watch in the same and thanksgiving. That's why I was telling you before when I was talking to Papa Do and I used to say, Papa Do, I need prayer. And he'd say a quick prayer and I'd be like, in my spirit, I'd be like, okay, is that it? <laughs> you know, and I was like, because I was so used to hearing I'm not going to say false prayer and stuff like that, but I was so used to hearing people and they say, pray for me. And they want to hit you all upside the head and, you know, just have you rolling all over. So he, he stretched out his hand and he praying in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's, it, it's, it's done. And I'd be just as happy and go on my merry way. Well, I've adopted that. I've adopted that because I've, I've learned and I've ta and I talked to him. I talked to other pastors and I understand that, the power of prayer is in the belief, the trust, the obedience, all of that. The conditions of acceptance, it's not in the show. It's not in the big words. It's not in the, I'm so scholarly that I can pray better than the next person, all like that. No. So once I started understanding that, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm telling you, I've been taught by some of the best. I've been taught by some of the best, you know, uh, that I worked with in the community. And, uh, man, I tell you, uh, when God sent me to Pastor Ashley and Pastor Pasco 
uh, Bobby, uh, Elder Mitchell and, and, uh, Papa Do and all of them, Pastor Woodson. Y'all don't know these people. Y'all, but these are some heavy hitters, uh, in, 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 in the prayer department and stuff like that. And I'm just saying that, but these are people that I had the, uh, opportunity to work with, you know, um, uh, uh, Dr. Wood, especially with community service, they taught me about community service. They taught me a lot of what you see. Uh, and that's why I'm telling you this. A lot of what you see, this comes from being in, in, in Riverside for 25 years after I came out of prison. And the Lord set me up with to work around these people, you know. And uh, I did not understand it. I'm sorry, the Marvel Comics thing. I just should have turned off the TV. I did not understand it until I started working around the community here in Blythe, California. And I was like, wow. I was like, all of that stuff that I was doing out there in the IE, I was like on training ground to bring it home to my people. My people, not like God's people, my people as far as my home towners, you know, people I love, a kid, people whose kids are coming up right now, people who I can give something to and give back to, you know, uh, before I leave this earth, you know, and it just amazed me. It just overwhelmed me that I was like, wow, that God thought so much of me where I wanted to go somewhere else. But again, he put me where I needed to be most. Because I told you I was going to school to be a Bible worker and, and, and was going doing all of that and everything like that. But I've known now that if I had went in that direction, I wouldn't probably have been a community-minded person that I am right now. But anyway, that was just a little testimony to let you know that I I believe in what I'm talking about. I know what I've been through and I know what I got in my heart in spite of everything that uh, men may say, women may say, kids may say about me. It doesn't faze me not one bit because I know more than anything that I am a child of God. Okay, so... um. That was seven minutes. So we are to be in instant in prayer. Okay. That's going back to what I said. To continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. Okay. So um, those uh, scriptures in reference to that is in Romans 12, 12. Colossians 4, 2. Both in the New Testament. Peter exhorts, E-X-H-O-R-T-S, believers, exhort, admonish. That means like he's, he, uh, he exhorts you. It's like he's pushing. He's pushing for you. Peter pushes believers to be sober and watch unto prayer. Excuse me. <clears throat> First Peter four and seven, Paul directs and everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That's in Philippians four, six, that's in the new Testament. It says, but ye beloved says Jude in the new Testament, praying in the Holy ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God. Jude 20, 21. Now I don't want to uh, knock anybody from what they believe in or anything like that. But a lot of scholars, uh, when you're teaching and going to school, stuff like that, they break that down. Some people believe that to be meaning that when you pray in in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit, you speak in tongues. If that works for you, uh, that's between you and God. That's between you and God. As for me, uh, when we was talking about earlier how God gives us that we cannot pray, we cannot do too much of anything unless we have the influence of, of, of the Holy Spirit in our lives to put an influence on the Lord. That scripture right here, praying 
in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Praying in the Spirit. Being mindful of what you have going through your head while you're praying. Praying in the Holy Ghost, asking the Spirit to come upon you to to release whatever that might block your prayers from going to God. Okay, that's my personal belief. But I had to give you both sides of it because I wouldn't be giving you the truth. Okay? That's something you can work out between you and God when you pray. That's in Jude, J-U-D-E. And it's only... It's only uh, one page of Jude, and that's in verse 20 and 21. So you can uh, Google that and get what you want, get from it, but ask for in the Spirit of God to uh, release the knowledge uh, of what that means for you, okay? And let me make that a correction. What that means for him, for you to receive, okay? Unceasing prayer is the broken union of the soul with God so that life from God flows into our life and from our life, purity and holiness flow back to God. Unceasing prayer, always in prayer, always in prayer, always in check, always in check. (laughs) There is necessity for diligence in prayer. Let nothing hinder you. Make every effort to keep open the communion between Jesus and your own soul. Seek every opportunity to go where prayer is want to be made. W-O-N-T. Those who are really seeking communion uh, with God will be seen in the prayer meeting, faithful to do their duty, and earnest and anxious to reap all benefits they can gain. They will improve every opportunity of placing themselves where they can receive the rays of light from heaven. We should pray in the family circle and above all, we must not neglect secret prayer. For this is the life of the soul. It is impossible for the soul to flourish while prayer is neglected. That's why you see a lot of people, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You see a lot of people going to church and they just is angry. They so unhappy. They miserable. Things just ain't going right. They might have a good job and stuff like that, but their insides are rotten. Their insides are rotten. And it has a lot to do with your prayer life. Your prayer life is a privilege that God has given us instructions through the Bible on how to pray and what to expect. It is impossible for the soul to flourish while prayer is neglected. Family or public prayer alone is not sufficient. In solitude, let the soul be laid open to the inspecting eye of God. That's where you just let it all hang out. It's just you and God. You ain't got to get on your knees. You ain't got to spread out unless you want to, whatever. But you can just sit there and just talk to God. Just you and him in the solitude. Just you and him. Now, if something overcomes you and you just feel like you want to just lay there and sprawl out before him, you know. But there's a lot of people who lay out and sprawl out before God. But what's coming out of their heart is just show. It's just show. Be yourself. Be for real with God because who can you hide from? You can't hide from him. Secret prayer is to be heard only by the prayer hearing God. I have a lot of secret prayers. I have a lot of faults that people don't see. And I don't try to to hide them. But they ain't nobody else's business but mine. As much as I do on Facebook, a lot of people say, oh, you just put everything on Facebook. No, I don't. If I put everything on Facebook, y'all wouldn't be listening to this video. Y'all probably be trying to bail me out of jail or something. (laughs) Or do something. Put an APB out on me or something. No, you know, it's the things that go through my mind 
like, uh, the other day I was listening to this, uh, thing on TV where they finna start this new show, the crown of gospel. I guess it's, it's something like, like love and hip hop and all housewives and all like that. So now they got this reality show called crown of gospel. And one of the kids was saying something to the fact I wasn't even paying attention. I was crocheting and I heard him say, is Jesus Christ, you think Jesus Christ got horny? And I was like, what? Wait a minute. What is this? And then that's what I see. The reason why I brought that up is because there are things that go through our mind that we do have questions about and stuff like that. Some things you don't have to put out there to ask questions about it or stuff like that. You know, and you're not going to worry about whether Jesus Christ got horny or nothing like that. And the reason why I bring that up so freely is because when uh, when I was coming up back in the 70s or the 80s, something, they had a movie out called The Last Temptation of Christ. And they said that Christ came down and had sex with uh, Mary Magdalene or something like that. It was a big controversy over there. So they were saying, you know, oh, oh, my gosh, that's blasphemy and this, that and other. Excuse me. I have that uh GERD, so I feel it trying to come up and stuff. But the reason why I'm saying that is that even though he said it out loud on TV and everything like that, everybody was like, what? You know, remember it says that Christ was tempted in all things just as we were, but he recoiled from sin. Now, that's not that's not saying that the dude was wrong for asking that question, but I think he was just trying to be funny and stuff like that at the time. But I'm bringing that up to say, because in prayer, in prayer, that is a time that we question things with God that we wouldn't say to anybody else, or we wouldn't uh, probably scared to say to God, but he was saying, you know, there's things sometimes we have to get up out of us. If we don't get up out of us, it's like a sore festering, you know? So don't let uh, the idea that what you have on your mind keep you from taking it to God in prayer because you think that that is something that you can't take to him. That's God. He says, come unto me. All ye that are heavy burdened, I'll give you rest. Okay? So, oh, it says my battery's going down. So, uh, oh, excuse me. So, I hope you got my point, what I'm saying. Okay? Oh, that was going down. That's 12%. So, right here, what he says, secret prayer is to be heard only by the prayer hearing God. So don't feel like God is so far removed from us that we can't talk to him about any and everything. Trust me, I do, I do. And I can tell you that I'm still here, I'm still blessed, and I'm still enlightened because I take him at his word. And I want you to take him at his word too. So uh, we don't want to be walking around... uh, Uh, having our prayers neglected because we're not doing it in faith or trust. And if we ask questions that we really want answers to, that's trusting God to give us the answers that he knows that we may need or may not need. And, but he's going to give us an answer. Okay. So, uh, yeah, now they got this hip hop gospel stuff coming on. Um, but stuff like that, I stay away from, but like I said, it was just going on one of them commercials. And so I guess they got all these gospel rappers and singers and, and children of famous rap, uh, gospel people. Now they got a show. I don't know. I don't fool with that kind of mess. So no curious ear is to receive the burden of such petitions in secret prayer. The soul is free from surrounding influences free from excitement, calmly yet fervently will it reach out after God. Sweet and abiding will be the influence emanating from him who seeth in secret, whose ear is open to hear the prayer arising from the heart. 
okay? Now, that can be two things. It's arising from the heart because we're giving it to him from the heart or understand that he knows our heart. He sees everything. So even though we don't bring it out, you know, it's like we're not giving God the uh, his, his respect because we're trying to hide it from him and he sees it. So, you know, give, give it up, give it up. And if you give it up, if it's something that you feel like that you should be ashamed of or stuff, give it up so you, you can get it out of you and then you don't have to worry about it no more. Excuse me. So by calm, simple faith, the soul holds communion with God and gathered to itself rays of divine light to strengthen and sustain it in the conflict with Satan. God is our tower of strength. Pray in your closet as you go about your daily labor. Let your heart be open, uplifted to God. Pray in your closet. Now, you can't take your closet everywhere you go, right? Pray in your closet. It's, it's a, a, not an analogy. It's just to say symbolic. It's symbolic. Your heart is your closet, you know, when you pray. You know, some people have their altars in their prayer room, war room, whatever they want to call them, stuff like that. But for the most part, you take your closet with you everywhere you go. And that's what he said, play, pray in your closet. Okay. Pray in your closet as and as you go about your daily labor. Let your heart be often uplifted to God. Praise God as you go. Uplift your heart to him. Give your heart to him. Stop in the middle. Sometimes stop in the, I tell you, sometimes I'll be at the stoplight and I think about stuff and it hit me and I'll be like, oh, Jesus, wow. You know, I, I, I don't know if I ever repented for that, but I'm repenting right now. And people be honking or whatever, but I have to, ooh, I have to pray about that. It happens. It was thus that Enoch walked with God, E-N-O-C-K. These silent prayers rise like precious incense from the throne of grace. Satan cannot overcome him whose heart is thus stayed on upon God. Remember that Satan cannot overcome him whose heart is thus stayed upon God. And that goes back to that other scripture where it says darkness, evil, and closes, and closes the person who neglects prayer. That's a reference right there. Okay, we on, we got seven minutes. There is no time or place in which it is inappropriate to offer up a petition to God. That's what I was just telling you. There's no time and place when something is inappropriate. You know, Lord, I don't know what this is. I don't know why I'm feeling like this. I don't know what this is about, but I'm bringing it to you. You know, that's respect. There is nothing that can prevent us from lifting up our hearts in the spirit of earnest prayer. In the crowds of the street, in the midst of a business engagement, we may send up a petition to God and plead for divine guidance as did Nehemiah when he made his request before King Exerceus. A closet of communion may be found wherever we are. We should have the door of the heart open continually and our invitation going up that Jesus may come and abide as a heavenly guest in our soul. We have 24 minutes. Okay, so we have one, two, three. We have four more columns. Oh, excuse me. It got cold in here. That's where my nose stopped up. We have four more columns. And like I said, for the importance of the privilege of prayer, I will do 10 videos. It does not matter because I do not want to rush through it. 
I want you to understand the privilege and power of prayer. So as we get ready to close out on this video, uh, we're going to do the next one. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, four columns. This is four and five right here. And then uh, we'll be finished. Okay. So I will be posting this uh, shortly.